Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. I uh, hope you've enjoyed, uh, if you had the chance to use the exhibition booths and the networking lounges, I uh, hope you've had a chance to have some really useful conversations. Uh, we'll be able to open those booths and lounges up again shortly, but uh, we're back here now for uh, another keynote speech, this time talking about uh, how robotic process automation enables significant cost efficiency. Very useful indeed. And to tell us about this is uh, Jay Mehta, who's a Principal Solutions uh, Architect at Signet Solutions. Uh, Jay, thanks very much for being with us. Uh, great to have you here. So talk to us about RPA and, and the cost efficiency. Hello. All right, everybody. Hope you're with us and, and you can hear us. All right. OK, we're back here for another keynote session uh, today as we talk about RPA enabling significant cost efficiency. Uh, I'm going to introduce you, uh, Jay Meta, who is Principal Solutions Architect at Signet Infotech. Jay, can you hear us? All right. Very well, Richard. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, really well. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. We've had some uh, really great conversations so far. And uh, I think as soon as we mention cost efficiency, a lot of people's ears prick up, obviously. So uh, you certainly have our attention. So take it away. Sure. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so here I'm just uh, starting my screen. I hope everybody can see my screen. I'll let you know when it's there. Should be there any second now. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. So, uh, hello everyone. This is Jay Mehta. Uh, I'm from Signet Infotech, and uh, today I'm speaking on um, how RPA enables significant cost efficiency. So, before we uh, get into it, I would like to start with a, like a very, very brief introduction: who we are. So, we are a uh, IT business solution provider company, more than a 20 years of experience and serving our solutions, uh, services, products uh, in more than 35 countries across the globe. And the most interesting thing is that what drives us is that our vision uh, that to passionately empower lives globally with technology enabled business solutions. So we really stick onto those lines and that's how we bring the agility, the dynamism in our customers' projects, and in fact, the solutions, products, and our services side. So uh, about Signet, so we basically found in a 2000, uh, and uh, then after we have not uh, seen back at all. It, it's been a completely like a driven with respect to the different technology came into the market, whether it's like a, a shifting from uh, mainframe systems to the servers and the client server programming and now towards to the uh, emerging technologies in which the RPA AI is among that. We have delivered more than 2000 high value software solutions to our customers and with a very high success rate. So our always been objective that to give some uh, value addition, give the business accelerators to within the solutions to our customers so that they can always be ahead and use of the cutting edge technologies that gives them a right angle of their business footprint up ahead and in the competition as well. So maturely our business transformation strategies, problem solving benchmark and agile business models basically enables our customer to transform their business into high performance businesses um, and taking them into the uh, forward uh, in their future. Uh, so here are some like a basic statistics that I would like to showcase that where we are exactly. So we are uh, located across the globe. So I basically work from United States, Princeton, uh, New Jersey. And uh, these are like, uh, we have a 
750 plus clients, 2000 plus solutions delivered, and we are active on 11 locations at this moment. Little bit about uh, myself. So uh, me working uh, with Signet as a principal solutions architect, and I'm responsible for heading AI and RPS practices within the organization. I have also spoke on uh, other conferences as well, specifically on Office 365, which is now renowned as a, like a, a Microsoft 365 and the cloud technologies. But also being a technology leader and um, doing and working on enterprise architect, the most common question comes around when I work particularly on the RPA practice side, which is our the, the title on which I'm going to speak today. So quickly jump into the, our, the main topic, which is the how the cost efficiency can be determined. So uh, here are the key factors basically, which I have always discovered when I was talking with the customers, understanding their case and transforming that basically into the uh, typical uh, uh, no digitization towards to the digitization. So that's where we brought the digital transformation because the RPA is playing the most significant part in the digital transformation. And nowadays, the digital transformation is the way to moving, uh, taking your business to the next level. Uh, so that is where their cost effectiveness comes with respect to the RPM. So these are the couple of points which I would like to cover from the cost efficiency point of view, where the digital transformation drives this. And obviously, if you talk to any like a, a CFO level person or CFO, uh, they would always look after that, okay, this is what we are doing the investment in RPA, which is a good technology, but what RP, uh, ROI can I expect? So you most of the time, the cost efficiencies can be determined based on the uh, ROI of the particular RPA solution, how they, they are going to fit into the uh, their ecosystem, what kind of... Uh, uh, benefits that they would get out of it, and more or less, they all comes with the correlated with the cost. So, if I talk about uh, process assessment and optimization, so this is very important step when you plan the RPA or deploy the RPA solutions within your ecosystem, because it is kind of a hype that you can automate everything at this time, but it's not always going to be the case. There are certain processes in our uh, routine life where we cannot do everything at, uh, with the RPA automation. We need sort of a human intervention uh, as well, or say uh, decision making as well. But at least we can make them at least and empower our uh, humans in a way where they do not need to get into their repeated or daily mundane tasks. Uh, so that can be taken care of our RPA. So it is very important when you decide that, okay, this is what the ROI or a cost efficiency that I could uh, make out of it. It is very important that you do the right process automation and decide your uh, performance measuring parameters, which can basically lead to understand the what cost effectiveness basically you can get out of the RPA deployment. The another case is about all, do not forget your customers, uh, especially if you are on any an, an service side or on a, a, like a front end or back end, or, or if, if you are like a, deploying the RPA solutions as a front end towards to your customers. So I would like to correlate this point with a very good uh, case study, which on which I have uh, personally worked. So there were like a, we, we always have a, like a products. We post them uh, product portfolio on the market, I mean, your website, you can also always have like a kind of a ratings, uh, the feedback reviews coming in that way. Now, it is very important that uh, RPA can be placed along with that, it can scrap the reviews and do the sentiment analytics for you, which, because this is basically going into the little bit of a hyper automation, but it is very important to know that how your customers are feeling about your uh, RPA deployments. It can be like a chat bot, or it may be just simple, a service that they have experienced from you and they have a sort of a feedback, which is very important because sometimes the uh, the feedbacks, the reviews are written on website, they might be, they might go unattended. And nowadays the way the social media is playing the very important role, it can just simply turn into a troll and you get a, like a bad mouthing about your product, which is actually not the case and where you are actually leading with the best customer experience uh, and, 
you you really keen to give the best user experience. So such kind of a solutions when you are deciding it. So RPA is also helping over such areas as well, where you carefully understand that what customers are talking and thinking about your services, your products, and how effectively basically you can turn them into a very win-win situation or you at least consider that what was the issue so that you can basically go and go for the redressal for them. So that is where also indirectly or say intangible cost that you can consider that it is helping you to maintain your customer satisfaction index. Now, if you are talking about uh, cost effectiveness with respect to the regulatory and compliance, that is also important thing that we, which basically I would like to cover in one of our case study, which I'm going to showcase that that's where the, our cost effectiveness basically derived and we put the customer into very different situation from where they were. Also, uh, when you decide your processes uh, to be automated, it is very important that you need to think from the governance point of view as well, that how exactly you are going to measure the performance of your automation. What are the factors that, what, what, what characteristics or what factors you would like to extract out of that automation? And that is basically important and lead to the cost effectiveness. Now I would like to cover the further points with the, some of the case studies that I would like to share where we have really in, uh, helped our customers uh, and, and give them a right success measures. So this is a I, like a typical a digital transformation case uh, where the customer onboarding process for a, a for a bank it was completely uh, non digitized like a typical paper for forms that you have to fill out. But the most problematic thing came where the COVID hit and it bad hair. I mean it just uh, hit them very hard because they could not process uh, loans to the customers. They could not go for any KYC, which is very crucial step nowadays. And obviously, it's like a human to human touch is not possible. That interaction was just gone. So how those kind of a problems can be resolved? So we took this challenge with our, our customer and we worked on that we just created a simple form for the front end front end side but then after we have created the uh, process rpa process which can be used and integrated with the various api to validate customers information also to get rid of the like uh, the the bring the virtualization through the video based kyc in the solution itself so that that KYC process can be done remotely, but though it can be very uh, meeting all the regulatory and compliances as well, where the the person can really interact with the uh, with the customer, verify the identity, and also ask certain set of questions, which are basically put it on the form, so that based on that the KYC can be taken place. Now the. If we have to say the success measure in terms of cost efficiency is that we, uh, we got 100% automation over there. So that entire that prepper trail has been gone. So ultimately you are saving some sort of like a paper. So it means you are giving something back to the environment society. The data quality has been also improved as well because earlier the, all the papers, uh, all everything, the form written, everybody's having a different handwritings, but now since the, this is a digitalized digitalized form and everything is stored in the central repository, so overall the data quality has been improved because you can definitely, in the digital electronic form, you can enforce a sort of a validation and you can definitely get the data out of it. Also, it improves the productivity as well because even with the less human power, your human can still work on a more other efficient task than the the daily repetitive mundane task as well. And also, I mean, cons just consider that one agent can just go and talk or, or the representative just talk with the customer and collect their data. Maybe in a day, he or she can just take a, like a, a five customers and just to verify the KYC or even more. But by doing this, it, we can increase the process overall. So overall, you, if you see that the cost efficiency has been increased from uh, with the drastic, drastic changes, where you have uh, so many things to save on your side, your uh, employee satisfaction ratio has been also increased as well. And this all leads to the cost effective efficiency at the end. So that was the case one. 
I would like to put the case number two here is a relentless reconciliation. So we work with this uh, tax uh, for the tax customers. Uh, in fact, in house, uh, it, which is we, this is also our one of the, our uh, strongest area and strong footprint we have in the tax technology. So uh, as we all know that the reconciliation, as particularly on the taxation side, is a, a quite an exhaustive process. And when we start working to draft the solution, basically, so we identify that there are usually for our customer more than 300,000 records to match. And we were having a 150 rules to be matched for the one single record. So now just imagine how lengthy and tedious work is that. And for that, the RPA was our ideal choice because we also have a RPA product on our side as well. And what we gain for our customer, and we package that as a solution so that we can have an auditable and transparent process because obviously when the CPA do that, that all the stuff, I mean, they know by their all legal rules and compliance, but yes, if the RPA a bot is doing it, you need the transparency and also the audit trail as well so that you can verify that whether the reconciliation happened in the right way or not. Furthermore, that project, it turned into the like a hyper automation for us where we can able to produce the actionable reports because we also add the piece of AI and machine learning on top of it so that we could able to categorize the reconciliation output into different categories. And based on that, we could be able to understand that this particular record can be mapped with the another one, which can be partially matched or can be fully matched as well which is very significant for the reconciliation process because sometimes you need to take the very uh, informed decisions and it is it is driving very effectively so that you can also see that what is the best match for this missing record and that you can usually match and see that whether it is still reconciling your accounts at the end or not. Plus, it also helps to the customers in a way where they can also identify some fraudulent records as well. It might be the case some like a, a, because of a data source data error, you might getting a different records, or maybe like an API or a service is giving the wrong output at the time and you get a, like a wrong information. So that's those kind of a challenges that basically you can come out of it. Now, this process earlier without this RPA implementation, it was taking like almost like a two to three days of work. But after putting the RP in place, we literally reduced this into the man hours, like a couple of hours, two to three hours, and it generates the records for uh, for this uh, huge data set. So of course, it just turned into like a, into the cost efficiency. Also, the process turnaround time has been decreased quite a lot, as I mentioned, and. Also, it also helped the CPAs to take the faster decision making as well. So basically, it saved the time for the CPA. So in a day, like if CPA has to handle multiple reconciliation requests, so this kind of a RPA solution can basically help them to work on a more faster and quicker way for their customers. So overall, if you just see that the, how the cost efficiency has been improved by putting the RPA in, in your ecosystem. I have another case to discuss, which is slightly different, but yes, though it's still a retail, but it is a, again a typical a digital transformation where they were like a, they were having a, like a digital system, not like unless kind of a situation where everything is on a paper, but yeah, you have a different data management system and it can be like coming the data coming from a different sources. Like yeah, just imagine you have like a, a ERP system, you have a CRM system and which is also managing so many different information. So it is very important that you have a multiple source, but they're all coming into the single source to perform certain level of tasks. So the issue was with that they were having a lot of invoices, which are basically not matching for their accounting system. And so they were having like a thousand plus records that just to match in a single day. And they were having a lot of problems with the data inaccuracy. Uh, the productivity was lost just because of that, that the task was not so big, but they, you, their team members have to work for a longer hours or for multiple days just to settle all these records. We implement the RP, our RPA solution and it just turned into that the 
process was designed in a way where it can just do it in a two stage of uh, setting up a source file and the destination file and do the right matching between the invoice numbers. And it just turned into uh, 10 minutes. We get able to increase the data management capacity based on that. And ultimately the processing we got is that earlier they used to process only thousand records in a day. It just turned into the 100, 100,000. So that is what the 10 times faster efficiency that we derived for that overall operations. So accuracy measure, if I have to say 95%. So yes, again, it has saved a lot of rework for them. And the task was usually being run for a couple of multiple days. It just turned into the like a couple of minutes. Also, it has improved the service quality time for the end customer. The end customer was nothing but the, their internal audit department, which were looking for these answers. And that has been improved a lot so that ultimately their turnaround time to finish the process has been increased quite significantly. So these are the cost efficiency examples we have uh, with our RPA solutions. So I would like to say uh, a little bit about our solution. So our solution name is called Automation Viz. We are in the automation uh, service provide uh, and solutions since last 10 years. Um, and we also have our bot store where you can simply take the bot. Ready-made bots are available. There are more than 50 bots available and just fit into your system and plug and play. These are our esteemed customers. Uh, Abbott Lupin from Pharmaceutical Site Hindustan Lever Limited uh, and many more. All right. So uh, I would be open to take the questions if you have any. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Jay. Yeah, we do have uh, a couple to put to you here. So uh, see if these, uh, see what we can do with these, shall we? Um, f first up, um, f with Signet as uh, as an RPA provider, where what do you guys feel is your USP compared to other 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 products? Okay, so first of all, I would like to say, uh, so automation viz is all about like, a, it's an A to Z of automation. That's how we said, I mean, that's what the Amazon says, A to Z, but yeah, this is for our, uh, like a motto for automation. Uh, when we say uh, our connection with our uh, RPA is coming as like, a, it's our E to E offering. So we just not have a, like a product and we just, uh, give the product to our customer, but we go with the, our product is plus with the consulting and the services as well. So that covers from A to A. So we start with the consulting. We understand the customer's problem, how RPA can fit into it, whether the RPA can solve their problem. It's not going to be like a hard uh, consulting, but it's like, okay, let us review that how the RPA can solve their problem, whether we need to redesign their process and turn into the RPA solution. And based on that, we start giving the uh, design perspective, like I earlier mentioned the process as assessment that we do and optimize the process if required. And then after we start doing the RPA implementation for our customers. So that's how like our unique USP. Another thing is that our uh, cost effectiveness, because if you just see that, uh, we can just scale from not just like a one single bot to five, but we can scale directly from 500 bots at a time. And depending upon the, the processing power or uh, more bots needed, depending upon the complex process processes. But that's what our USB. And another USB is that we, we, we also have our own dedicated data center. Uh, and if the customers are having already using the, any public data centers, I mean, public cloud, like uh, Google and uh, AWS. So we are, our, our solution also connects with that as well. Um, a couple of tech questions come in here. One says, does your product support the on-prem on cloud deployment? Yes, it does. Okay. And, and is it, is it empowered with um, the OCR optical character recognition? Oh, yes, it is. It is because in the digital transformation journey, it is very essential thing that the RPA should perform the OCR because you have always like a, a scanned or digital, or you can say like an unstructured data or maybe sort of like a PDFs. And it is very important that it there has to be scanned and understand that so that that information can be actually formed into the particular centralized location. 
So the, our solution is enabled with the OCR. And uh, but to be like a more precise, we are using uh, Google Cloud Vision OCR services and test rack, which is inbuilt in our solution so that it caters all the OCR requirements. Oh, that's embedded. OK. Um, and, and I know you, you mentioned some uh, impressive numbers at the start there, but can you tell us roughly how many places to date you've managed, you deployed uh, the bots uh, or bots platform? It is deployed on more than 70, uh, 750 plus clients uh, deployed across the globe. Wow. And sure, sure to increase, uh, I'm, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Jay, uh, thanks for joining us uh, today. Thanks, thanks for your insights as well. And, and, and thanks for those case studies. Really useful to see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening ahead. Uh, so there's Jay from uh, Signet Infotech joining us there. Um, now we are going to reopen again our uh, our lounges and um, uh, those networking opportunities, but that's actually the last of our keynote speeches uh, this afternoon. So it's only right really to thank everyone who's taken part today. So Jay from Signet, also uh, Kanishka from Kamunda, uh, Emiliano uh, from Innovation Labs as well, Matt Dodgson from Blueprint, uh, Martin Fabiano from the Nibble Group as well, Lashana uh, Wiggs, who came on from Wells Fargo, and uh, the guy who kicked us all off, the uh, head of uh, business uh, intelligence. Uh, Dr. Kevin McClafferty, who joined us from HSBC. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been part of it today as well. We should uh, obviously thank uh, the sponsors who've helped us put it all together, uh, Signet Infotech and the Nibble Group as well, who are our gold sponsors, and our platinum sponsors, Blueprint and Kamunda as well. And we couldn't have put it all together either without our media partners, who've been really helpful in making sure that we can get this all here and put it on for you. So massive thanks to Finyear, uh, to Fintech Finance, to digitalscouting.de, uh, to Financial IT, uh, also the FinTech Times and the guys at Krypton News as well. Really appreciate your help and everything that you've been able to do for us. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope that you find the rest of the sessions useful, whether you are going to go uh, networking now or whether you're going to go and uh, have some particular individual conversations with people. They will be all open for you, and I hope that that does help start off some conversations for you, at least help you make some uh, some new connections uh, through today. As you hate horizon, have uh, really enjoyed putting this on for you and we hope we can put on a few more for you later on down the line as well. So do take care of yourselves, uh, stay safe and we look forward to seeing you very soon.